guys. Hey. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're doing conspiracy some theories. crazy conspiracy theories. Just some random ones that I, I found that I don't think a lot of people have talked about. And I was like, let's just talk about some new conspiracy theories. Ronaldo and the 1998 World Cup Final Conspiracy. So just before the World Cup in 1998, Zidane Zidane of the French football team was awarded with the, I always forget how to say this, um, it was like the Ballon d'Or and was named the player of the year. The year before, Ronaldo has al had also received the same title and award. Zidane was a league champion three times. Ronaldo and Brazil were looking to defend their World Cup champion title, which they received in 1994. Both Brazil and France would play to make it through the round of 16, which if you don't know what that is, a round of 16 is the top two teams of each group, which are 16 groups in total, advance to the knockout stage to compete in a single elimination style tournament. So it's basically a giant round robin. So France was the host of the nation was the host nation, sorry, for the 98 World Cup. So Brazil went on to defeat Chile, Denmark, and the Netherlands. And then France went on to, to defeat Paraguay, Italy, and then Croatia. And then many were anxious to see Ronaldo and Z Zidane go head to head against each other. Ronaldo was the top goal scorers of the tournament. And then when people thought of Brazil, they think of Ronaldo. Hours before the final game, it was released to the press that Ronaldo, ha Ronaldo had fallen ill and was rushed to the hospital. Out of nowhere, Ronaldo returns 40 minutes before the game, cleared completely to play. And here's Ronaldo, plays it early to Ronaldo. The flag stays down and Ronaldo scores his first goal in the World Cup Finals. Wait in All of a sudden, his name appeared on the team sheet in Edmundo's place. The rumors were that his knee injury had worsened or that he'd suffered from a seizure. As the match started, Ronaldo wasn't playing like himself. He wasn't playing aggressively and didn't seem to have the determination to win. Brazil seemed completely defeated when they weren't playing defensively and making careless mistakes in plays they would go on to lose the match 0-3. to three. So Zidane won France's first World Cup. It had taken France 20 years after Zidane to lead them to the victory to get another World Cup title. Everyone since has come up with their own theories about what happened to Ronaldo before the final. The night before the final, reports came in that Ronaldo, Ronaldo sorry, had suffered a minor seizure. <laughs> Staff doctors saw Ronaldo experiencing convulsions in his hotel room, shaking uncontrollably and balled up on the floor. And then Ronaldo's doctors had been prescribing him a pain medication called Voltarian? Bol Voltron? I think it's Voltarian. Voltarian? Okay. <laughs> this is to help with Fagu and other minor energies he had suffered throughout the tournament. Voltron side effects do not show 2K seizures or non-convulsion, or convulsion, sorry, but they do include stomach pain, dizziness, headaches, which could explain the state that he was in before the game. And then like, if the situation about Ronaldo being sick before the game, one of the first conspiracies is that Nike forced him to play. Now everybody knows the World Cup is one of the biggest stages for world football or soccer, if you know it as soccer. And it is the most watched gaming event in the world with about 5 million viewers on average, making it the perfect event for a company to make a great impact on their consumers. The World Cup final also proved to be a clash between Nike and Adidas. Nike being the sponsor of not only Ronaldo, but Brazil's team. Adidas was the sponsor of Zidane and France's team. That's spicy. So, Nike couldn't let their biggest competitor outdo them. So according to the theory, the Brazilian football Confederation and Nike had a contract stating that they must play Ronaldo throughout the entire tournament and they threatened to take about his sponsorship take about his sponsorship money and force him to play through the final game. <laughs> the head of the CBF allegedly walked into the dressing room and told coach Mario Zagallo to add Ronaldo back to the starting lineup. Okay, so theory number two is that Brazil's player accepted bribes to throw the game. 
So this theory claims that the CBF, along with the Brazilian government officials, accepted an offer to bribe the Brazilian football team $30 million to throw the match and let France win. Part of the bribe was that the Brazilian team would have an easy pass into the 2002 World Cup and Brazil would have a chance within the next decade to host the World Cup, which happened in 2014. Um, personally, I think this theory is kind of whack. I think it's yeah. like insane that somebody could put somebody, you know, somebody could be literally seizing in his bedroom or his hotel room and then a company is forcing them to play because they want their sponsorship money. Well, I don't think the second theory could possibly be true because in uh, Latino, Latina countries like soccer like hispanic latino yeah. you know soccer is i said latina and brazilian brazil people from brazil aren't latina they're hispanic is that how you put it for them i forget what the generalized is yeah. for i always forget anyway sorry um they're, they're literally hispanic they're way, cultures yeah. they're way proud about that stuff like um I don't know which, I can't remember which World Cup it was, um, but Brazil did terribly. And so there were reports of like when the players would go to like the grocery stores to like get things like, and they would like smash their groceries as they were putting them in the bags, you know, because they were so disappointed. Like literally the country goes into riots if yeah. they lose. So I don't understand how that would have happened. Like how that- like, How they would have brought, yeah. Right, like. Yeah, I don't either, but it's an interesting, theory to think about for sure <clears throat> the ford logo mandela effect now does anyone else remember having that unusual little pigtail curly cue at the end of the bar that passes through the f all right despite the logo being the most recognized in the world many swear that they've never seen that little loop before and that just doesn't even look right. It's not an updated logo. The little loop has been there since at least 1912. I think I've remembered the loop this whole time. I feel like I do too, cause I just did it. Yeah, like I, I can remember... see it cause it's like, it's like yeah. Ford. Cause my mom, my mom had a, we've always had Ford trucks. Like as long as we've had a truck, yeah. except for one, it was always a Ford. Yeah. And so I've literally spent my entire life looking at them. And I used to drive a Ford Mustang, so trust me. I know what the logo looks like. Australia doesn't exist. So this theory seem, sh stemmed, sorry, words are hard, from a Facebook user, Shelly Flory, Flory, Flory? Floored, I think. Floored. Floored. <laughs> From Sweden. Shelly called out one of the biggest hoaxes ever created. So the theory is that Britain invented the convict col colony of Australia as an excuse to execute thousands of prisoners. Thousands. Under the guise of transporting them to a faraway territory. So all of the proof you see are fabricated lies and documents made by the leading governments of this world. The Aussies are all actors, completely generated personas, part of the plot to trick the world, according to Shelley. The plane pilots are all in on this too, and have actually flown you to the islands close nearby, or in some cases, parts of South America, where they have cleared space and <laughs> hired actors to act as real Australians, according to Shelley. In 2006, a post on the Flat Earth Society forum said, a reliable most, one. <laughs> most of you have probably been brought up believing the imaginary land called Australia. I bet many of, you, many of you even learned about it in school. I am here to tell you the truth. Well, the fact is that Australia doesn't really exist. Everything you have ever learned about it was made up. And any pictures of it you have seen were faked by the government. To quote, I am sure you have even talked to people on the internet who claim to be from Australia. They are really secret government agents who are surfing the internet to enforce these false beliefs. Continue the quote, we are not entirely sure why the government made up an imaginary content or why it was trying to convince the world that this continent is real. Continent, not continent, my bad. <laughs> 
but we can tell you that we know for a fact that Australia doesn't really exist. Along with this theory, there are other parts of the world that have been theorized to be hoaxes. Finland, the Italian region of Molise, and the Brazilian state of Acre. Um, it's an interesting theory to think about, that it's just for like, the actual land itself is for prisoners and like, it's just a hoax for being this beautiful yeah. thing. But I know somebody from Australia and I don't think she's yeah. a government agent. <laughs> or even like, so it was Britain's colony that shipped off Pris prisoners, prisoners yeah. right? And so like if America knew that, they would be like, oh heck no, this isn't real. Like why yeah. would, you know, they would do nothing to help Britain out. Is that the ice bucket challenge was a satanic ritual. A writer from World Net Daily, Selena Owens, can't fathom why anyone would willingly dump ice water on themselves. So she did some digging and concluded that the ice bucket <laughs> challenge was and still is a satanic ritual. Report the theory is actually a satanic ritual, is the story of Corey Griffin's death. So Griffin was the IBC co-founder. He died in August 2014 when he jumped off a building in Nantucket and drowned following a successful fundraiser when they raised a hundred hundred thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars for als research he is pronounced dead at 3 a.m which is actually a satanic hour <laughs> so to quote he floated to the surface then he sank he did not come up again it confound it confounds me as to why griffin would take such a risk with his life especially in the dead of the night very odd very bizarre bizarre, bizarre and very dark she also points to to a video which is self-described evangelist Anita Fuentes explains a number of cryptic and cultic messages hidden in the IBC ritual which is the cleansing America in the name of the Antichrist Lucifer Satan for some future thing. The video description of Oprah Winfrey taking the challenge is particularly disturbing. Owen said Winfrey precedes her dousing with the words in the name of ALS and the ice bucket challenge because okay oprah because oprah mistakenly believes the one true god is jealous of her and the well-known fact that she denounces jesus as the only way to god and basically considers herself to be a god i found this statement to be very cultic in nature in conclusion the als ice bucket challenge is ritualistic in nature people are chosen to undergo a form of water baptism which is a cultic god Oprah leading the charge in the name of ALS. So you know how Oprah is supposedly part of the Illuminati, right? Right. So maybe that stems from that theory. That that doesn't strike me as a sat satanic thing to do though. Me either. But it is interesting to think of if it's Oprah started it and it was stemming from the Illuminati thing, it would make a little bit of sense. I but the fact that it's, unless they did it to cover up that it was like, you're doing this for Satan. Here, you're actually doing it for, you know, whatever. And she was the one giving the money to the cause. I think Selena Owens, no, I'm not trying to slander her and I'm not, this is all fake. This is not 100% true, but I strongly believe she's smoking crack cocaine. It's an interesting theory, Selena, but. Crack cocaine will do that to you. I think. Cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> I think that it's a very interesting theory. I feel like you could have found more to back your theory up. Okay. But so that was all for today's video. Um, if you want us to do more conspiracy theory videos, we probably will, even we if you don't will. want us to. Um, that's all we have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Like. We'll see you guys in the next video for sure. Comment. Subscribe. subscribe. Comment your feelings about these things. If you believe them, why you believe them. If you don't, if don't believe them, tell us why you don't believe them. Why you don't? If you have any more, or if you have further proof, yeah, yeah go ahead and let put us that know. Uh, in the description. In the comments, you guys can't put shit in the description. That's my job. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. But thanks. yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.